Hey, what is happening my friends? Austin Hunter here and in this video I'm going to be giving you four tips on how to pose people who are not models. It is very common for those of us who are just starting out in photography to ask our friends, our family, or anybody else rather to pose for us, but most people have no idea how to pose for the camera. I'll be giving you four tips that will have you posing people like a pro. Are you ready? Let's begin. Tip number one, keep it positive. Most people are going to feel really uncomfortable and maybe even a little anxious being photographed, especially if they haven't done it before. It's going to be your job as the photographer to keep things light and upbeat and make them feel comfortable. There's a lot of ways by doing this. You could just talk to your model first ease into some conversation before you start the photo shoot, ask them how their weekend was, ask them what they're going to do after this. Just keep it light, keep it fun, and then once you start shooting, give them positive reassurance that they're doing well and you're happy with how they're looking. Simple things like saying, okay, this looks perfect, or great pose, or I like this. Simple stuff like that is going to help your model feel a little more relaxed and a little more at ease, which is going to give you better images. One word of caution, don't bring attention to the things that are negative. Let's say you took a picture and you're not happy with the way the image looks, or you're not happy with the angle, or maybe it just doesn't look as flattering as you were hoping it would be. Instead of saying something like, oh okay, this isn't working, or mm, you know what, I don't like that, keep it happy. Say, mm, you know what, let's try something new, or this is good, but we're gonna move on to something else now. Stuff like that can allow you to verbalize that, you know, maybe this isn't working out, but not in a way that's making your model feel bad about themselves. So, for the best results, you're going to want to keep it light, keep it positive, and that's gonna make your model feel more comfortable and more comfortable models equals better pictures. And your model will probably enjoy the experience and want to work with you again in the future. Tip number two, use a frame of reference. Now, most people that don't have any professional modeling experience are gonna have no clue on how to pose themselves. And they might get even a little confused when you're trying to tell them and direct them. One thing I found worked really well for me was to instead of tell them what I want them to do, to show them instead. And you can show them very easily using that smartphone in your pocket. All you need to do is go on Pinterest and search the term modeling poses. From there, there's gonna be thousands upon thousands of results. Save the ones that you like or you want to try at your photo shoot and then you can show them to your model. One thing I would do in addition to this was maybe a day or two before the photo shoot, I would reach out to my model and ask them, hey, do you have a Pinterest account? Oh, okay, why don't you search the term modeling poses and save the ones you like. We'll try those out too when you come in for your photo shoot. This allows your model to have a little bit more creative input in their photo shoot, which hopefully is gonna have, let them have a better time and get you some more variety in your images because now two people are coming together over this instead of just you. Either way, Pinterest, Google search, however you plan on getting those images saved, they're gonna be a great tool for when you do your photo shoot. Just show them to your model and say, hey, can you do something like this? Okay, perfect. And then you start shooting. Tip number three, it's all in the eyes. Whenever I work with someone who hasn't done any professional modeling before, I like to educate them on the importance of eye contact. In most portraits, the eyes will be the sharpest point in our image because that's where the focus is being set. The eyes are where the viewer is going to connect with the subject. They're going to see those eyes first. So it's very important to educate your model to be aware of how their eyes are presenting to the camera and just what exactly the type of emotions they're conveying with their eyes. Take these images for example. Do these eyes look like they're conveying confidence and determination? How about this image? You can help guide your model's eye contact through commands or prompts. I will usually bounce between both until I find one that works best for my model. A command is saying something like, lean forward, squint your eyes, and look through my lens. Whereas a prompt on the other hand, 
leaves it open for the model's interpretation of what you want them to do. A prompt would be something like, show me a look of determination on your face. Chances are between that command and that prompt, you're going to get a similar reaction from your model. It really just depends on which person you're working with. Some people like having that creative control, other people prefer just you telling them how you want them to pose. Ultimately, the entire goal is to make sure your model's eyes convey the proper emotion that you're going for in your image. Feel free to experiment with both of these techniques and see which one works best for you and your model. Tip number four, think asymmetrically. There are a ton of ways to pose a model, and truthfully, getting it down right and feeling comfortable with it is just something that's going to take time and experience. You will have to develop an eye for posing. Now I could have given you just some cookie cutter poses for you to take away with this video, but instead I want you to leave this video with a frame of mind regarding posing, and that frame of mind is this. For interesting portraits, think asymmetrically. Symmetry is an important compositional technique when it comes to photography, but if you want to create portraits that capture your viewer's interest, you'll want to pose your models asymmetrically. This is especially helpful and relevant when it comes to posing the hands, as most people have no idea what to do with their hands when they're trying to pose. Here's an example of a symmetrical pose, and here is an example of an asymmetrical pose. Which one looks more interesting to look at? There's plenty of room to experiment when it comes to asymmetrical posing, and you're going to find the poses that you really like as time goes on. One of the ones that I like is using one hand on the hip and one hand on the back of the head or touching the face. That is one of my favorite go-tos for asymmetrical posing. But just remember, not all poses have to be so dramatic. You can do something that's only minorly asymmetrical, such as having the model put both hands on her hips with only one hand slightly more elevated than the other one. Okay guys, you made it this far, I'm going to give you a quick bonus tip. And while it's not specifically related to posing, it is something you will encounter a lot of when you work with people that don't have professional modeling experience. We're going to talk about eliminating some distractions when it comes to starting your photo shoot. One place you should look before you start your photo shoot is your model's wrists and his or her pockets. The reason why I ask you to look at the wrist is because many times ladies will keep their hair ties right here for the event in which they need to put up their hair in a ponytail. This is something you will easily miss before you start your photo shoot, but you will notice, notice it after while you're editing your photos. So take a quick moment before you start shooting, look at her wrist and get rid of any hair ties, unless that's what you're going for, before you start your photo shoot. Similarly, and men are a huge culprit when it comes to this, check the pockets for phones and wallets. The phone and the wallet are things that hide in our pockets. They're really easy not to notice while you're shooting, but you will notice those unsightly lumps in the pockets after you're in post-production. So before you get started, go clear all those things off your models and have them put off safely to the side. And that is your bonus tip for today. All right, everybody, well, that is it for our video today. We learned how to pose people who are not models. And we learned how to keep it positive, to use a frame of reference, and that good portraits start with the eyes, and lastly, to think asymmetrically. Which tip did you find most helpful? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. And you know what, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It's gonna be the perfect place for new photographers who are looking to better their craft or for those of us who are thinking of making money with our photography. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until next time, Austin out.